Hello and thank you for watching this ag forecast for the western U.S. I'm Andrew Pritchard, Senior Meteorologist with Nutrien Ag Solutions. We're looking at the satellite picture first thing on Tuesday morning. We've got a series of frontal boundaries making their way across the northern plains and the, uh, the Great Lakes. And then we've continued to see very strong onshore flow, strong upper level support making its way across the Pacific Northwest, delivering Pacific moisture and continuing the heavy rain across the region, especially across western portions of Washington down into northwest Oregon this morning and then off across northern Idaho. We're looking at the current radar uh, loop here across the lower 48 early on Tuesday morning. So if you're watching this video a little bit later in the day, take a uh, more, more recent look at the radar there if it's relevant to you. But that's what we've got up going on here between 7 to uh, 9 o'clock central here, which would be about 5 to 7 Pacific time. Last seven days of precipitation as advertised, heavy rain across the Pacific Northwest, western Washington down into northwestern Oregon, picking up three to six inches of rainfall, locally higher amounts. And then of course, at the last moment, the rainfall that was being forecast for northern and parts of central California, of course, that system deflected off to the south, not seeing the rain there. So continuing to be dry, uh, across California off toward the Four Corners region uh, and the forecast continues to be dry there as we look out across the next five to seven days. So the main stories across the west as we talk about the next five to seven days, we've got additional rain in the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Plains continuing to be dry in California across the southwest. This is the five day rainfall forecast taking us into Sunday morning. We have to talk about some high winds today across parts of the, uh, the Pacific Northwest. Those winds going to be gusting 50 to 60 miles per hour at times in some areas. We'll talk about this in more um, a specific nature here in just a couple of moments. But here's a look at the forecast wind gusts uh, over the next 24 hours. And again, a big swath of those winds gusting uh, 40 to 60 miles per hour locally higher across the Pacific Northwest into the northern plains. And then we're going to talk about a temperature transition. We're going to see a jet stream, uh, not much of a pattern change, but kind of a change in the alignment of our trough across uh, central west central Canada. Uh, we're going to start to see some cold air intrusions at times across the Pacific Northwest into the northern plains. We'll continue to be warm across the southwest. Uh, but again, as we head into the weekend and early next week, we'll start to get some of these cold air intrusions, some of these cold fronts sweeping in across parts of Washington and Oregon, uh, down into parts of the central Rockies. So here's the jet stream as we get started on Tuesday morning. Very strong jet extension across the Pacific, again, uh, racing across uh, from west to east, uh, leading into a big trough here across uh, central or, or west central Canada from the Hudson Bay down into the northern plains. So as we head through the next few days, we're going to again see the, uh, the strong onshore flow bringing additional rainfall to the Pacific Northwest. We're going to see a ridge developing across the Pacific. And this over time, as we head into the weekend into early next week, is going to set up a pattern uh, sort of like this, where we've got the jet stream coming over that ridge and then just kind of racing from northwest to southeast. Uh, and we're going to see disturbances kind of being just uh, flung around the base of this trough across the Pacific Northwest, down into the Central Rockies, and then eventually ejecting across the Central Plains. So what this does, this sets up the pattern there where we're looking at much more in the way of cold air coming in from uh, Western Canada, down across the Canadian Prairie, into the Pacific Northwest, and the Northern Plains as we head into next week. This is also going to set the stage for those strong winds over the next two to three days as we see the very strong onshore flow uh, bringing another disturbance in. Here's a look at the wind gusts. We'll go through time with this one. So getting into this afternoon, we'll look for those strong winds from Washington and Oregon across western Montana. Again, gusting 40 to 60 miles per hour, in some cases a little bit higher than that. We'll see these winds continuing to move across the rest of Montana into Wyoming during the overnight into Wednesday morning. Winds will begin to calm down tomorrow across uh, Washington and Oregon, excuse me. Uh, but tomorrow they'll continue to be very strong across Montana and Wyoming down into the central Rockies. A couple uh, infographics from some of the local National Weather Service ob uh, offices here uh, in Spokane. We're talking about 50 to 65 uh, mile per hour wind gusts there. Uh, and then in um, uh, Pocatello across the Snake River Valley, we're talking about winds gusting 25 to 30, or I'm sorry, sustained winds 25 to 35 miles per hour, gusting to 50. Uh, and then as we head into um, uh, Great Falls across western Montana, this is where we're talking about potentially some uh, 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts in the higher elevations. Down across the plains, we're talking about more like 40 to 50 miles per hour. So very windy conditions, dry air coming in. We have to talk about a fire weather risk in some areas, especially tomorrow. 
Uh, we'll be talking about that across Wyoming, parts of the Central Rockies. Uh, but then even Northern California, we're going to get some down valley flow, lower humidity. Uh, we'll look for a critical fire risk there across Northern California tomorrow. And then across Southern California, we're actually looking for a strengthening of those nocturnal winds too. So dry conditions and strong winds leading to patchy uh, fire weather risks here as we go through the next 24 to 48 hours. Now the precipitation forecast, we'll look at the European model. Uh, watching this first disturbance make its way through over the next 12 to 18 hours, we'll see that rain begin to taper off across Washington and Oregon, uh, at least to more of a, uh, a light drizzle as we head into uh, Wednesday morning. We'll look for some snow in the higher elevations of northern Idaho into Montana and Wyoming as we head through Wednesday night into Thursday morning. We'll be dry across much of the west as we head through Thursday night, taking it into Friday. And then this is where we'll kind of kick off this pattern where we'll look for uh, storm systems to kind of race along that line from the Pacific Northwest down into the Central Rockies, looking something like this. So here we go through Saturday morning. We'll watch for some snow across Montana and northern Wyoming. As we get into Saturday night and Sunday morning, another quick system brings some showers to the Pacific Northwest, some snow possible again across Montana uh, into Wyoming. Another one that comes in here, excuse me, uh, Monday morning into Tuesday. Of course, details sketchy. We're a week out there, but I'm just showing you the, the pattern seems to want to just reload every two to three days, uh, sending a system kind of through this area, this trajectory. Uh, where we're looking more at rain across this area, but the potential for some snow as you get out toward the northern plains and some of our higher elevations. So the total rainfall forecast, sorry, the total uh, precipitation forecast over the next seven days, again, across Washington and Oregon, western portions there, we're talking about an additional two to four inches locally higher uh, possible there. Uh, and then as you get over toward uh, northern Idaho, getting into Montana and Wyoming, that's where we could see some significant precipitation as well. But dry in the Snake River Valley, dry as you get down into California off toward the Four Corners region as well. This is really, uh, you know, we're talking about the I-5 corridor here. We're talking about uh, portions of Washington getting some beneficial rainfall, but uh, dry and then dry as we go through the next six to seven days. Uh, looking at the, t uh, the chance for some snow, Again, we talked about much of the uh, the rainfall or the precipitation that falls in this area coming in the form of rain, of course. Uh, but then as you head back toward Montana, some of the higher elevations, we're looking at the probability of picking up an inch or more of snowfall between now and Sunday night. And again, starting to get some confidence in northern Idaho, uh, Montana, getting down into Wyoming. Some of the higher elevations definitely going to be picking up some snow here as we head into the weekend and early next week. We'll look at your high temperatures then just to wrap it up today, 60s and 70s across the northwest, warmer as you head off toward the south. We'll start to see some cool air make its way in across the northern half of the west tomorrow. This is your Wednesday afternoon highs. We'll look at things on Thursday. Friday, you see the warmth rebounding across the Pacific Northwest. Uh, and then we'll look at the high temperatures here on Saturday. And then as we head into next week, again, We'll look for the chance for some of these cool air intr intrusions, the additional precipitation across the Pacific Northwest into the Central Rockies, and don't forget those windy conditions here over the next 48 hours, bringing a localized fire weather risk.